Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Titus chapter 3. Put them in mind what we just discussed in chapter 2 last night. To be subject to principalities and powers. Okay? <clears throat> so the ministry has a sound doctrine to be taught. The people need to know what to do and how to act before God. That is the subject of, of the outlines and the messages. Our conduct. With that, pleasing God. Be mindful also that there are principalities and powers to obey magistrates. We are called in the Bible to reverence, obey, and be proper before anybody who is in any authority of any office. Whether it be a policeman, it be a judge, it be the mayor, it be your boss. We've already seen chapter 2. If it be the president of the United States or whoever your, your leader of your nation is, you are to be in subject. The only time that we are ever told that we're to go against the magistrates, go against the law, if it goes against the law of God. So in other words, speed limits, stop signs, red lights, they are perfectly proper. You can't find anything in the Bible about 55 miles per hour. But if they were to pass a law saying you cannot preach without a license, you can find doctrine cause says, you know, you are free to preach. You can't own a Bible. You can't read a Bible. Well, the Bible says I'm to study the Bible. But I don't think recently, as far as my life, for 48 years, there's been no ruling, no law put forth to restrict us from the Bible and God and serving God. To be ready to every good work. If it's good, do it. To speak evil of no man. Save their laws. To be no brawlers. Now run this back to, to 1 Timothy chapter 3. When you're looking at the minister. Again, we're talking to Titus who is a minister. And some of these causes would be great for the Christian too, even if he's not called to a ministry. And yet every Christian is called to the ministry. Every Christian is told to go all in the world and preach the gospel. So we are all ministers. We are all priests, Revelation chapter 1. We are all kings, Revelation 1, in the millennium. So it would be good as Christians to obey the minister characteristics because we are carrying the gospel, including women. No brawlers. You're not to start fights. You're to avoid fights. But gentle. Instead of being a brawler, be gentle. Showing all meekness unto all men, save the loss. For we, that's all of us, Christians, Paul, ourselves, also were sometimes foolish. I guarantee if you were to talk to my mother, I guarantee she could tell you many foolish stories of me. Growing up, before I was saved. You would talk to my friends growing up, before I was saved, I was foolish. I'm still foolish, sorry to say. I still do foolish things. 
I ought not to. Disobedient. Again, talk to my mother. Many times as a child, before I was saved, I was disobedient. Deceived. I grew up as, as a Roman Catholic. I was deceived. Serving diverse lusts, and yes. And pleasures, yes. Man, I only thought about myself. What I could do, what I could earn, so I can take care of my own self. Living in malice and envy. Always looking at somebody else as better than me. We're not looking at the same person. We're looking at before you were saved. Our characteristics when we were in the world, dead in trespasses without God alone, dying, hateful, and hating one another. That's a big difference from chapter 2. But after that, after you were saved, after you, you trusted Christ as your Savior, you became a new man, a new creature. The kindness of the love of God. God is love. There is no love without knowing God. And the only way you can know God is the love of God that God gave his son. That you receive that love. You receive God. Then you become of love. Anybody says, well, I love you. And they're not saved. They don't know what love is. They can't. Because if they're not saved, John 8, 44, their father is Satan. Satan's a murderer. He's a liar. So true love without God is not true love at all. The love of God, our Savior, there's God, our Savior again. Well, we just read Jesus Christ, our Savior. It's one and one. It's both. Toward man appeared. But after that, the kindness of the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That love became in us by trusting Christ. If a man hears Jesus Christ, what God has done, and rejected Jesus Christ, and God's love, you tell me that God loves that man? You're foolish. You're absolutely foolish. What if your child... So your child crossing the street and a car is going to hit him and your child runs and pushes him out of the way and gets smacked by that car and gets ran over by that car and dies. And the father and the child that, that survived mocks what your child will do. Are you going to love them? Nature would say, no, wait a minute. Didn't my son didn't do that for you? Didn't he risk his and died that your son is still living? Eh, who cares? I would have got out of it. There was no need to fear. I was in complete control. Come on. In natural senses, you would not have loved that person with that attitude. With the love of God. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. Salvation did not come of what we can do. We're not right. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration, making us new, regenerating us, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So we get regenerated we get a renewing a new creature now when the day i was saved that afternoon in my grandma's house it wasn't like lord god please save me i don't want to go to hell i forget what my my words were. now there wasn't a break like uh where do you go where does Stanley go and then i come floating down out of heaven as a new body no that didn't happen the same body was there. The same flesh is there. But I became regenerated. I became renewed. I'm still the old person. I am still the sinner in this flesh. But God cut away my flesh. Circumcised my flesh from my soul. My soul became alive. I eternal life that day by Jesus Christ. I look only different because of age. 
but I became a new creature. I have a new destiny now. I have been plucked from the gates of hell unto the gates of heaven by Jesus Christ. And yet, when I got up from the coffee table that, that afternoon, he looked at me, he still looks like Sterling. He doesn't look like he changed, but wait till you see the works I do later on. Wait till you see what my conduct is. For a man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart, which he shed on us abundantly. That's God our Savior. And through Jesus Christ our Savior. See, four and, four and six. I don't think the Jehovah Witnesses study Titus, the King James 6011 Bible. You can't be in there in a cult and then say that they're different. Where Paul has expressly laid out that God is my Savior. And Jesus is my Savior. And God is Jesus and Jesus is God. The day I trusted Christ as my Savior, I trusted God. There is no difference. Now, Paul warns us in the Corinthian church, there's another Jesus. There's a Jesus that is not God. Danger. Titus, Jesus is God. And God is Jesus. Now, I stress that all, maybe I stress it too much, but you got to know that relationship. And we get into the Trinity, you know, and yet they're one. They're my Savior with the Holy Ghost. So the Washington generation are renewing the, the brand newness abundantly by Jesus Christ. That being justified by his grace, not mine. When I walk into the courtroom of God, I ain't walking in there on my own merit. I'm walking in there with Jesus Christ, the righteous, the precious blood of the Lamb of God, which took away my sin. By his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. An inheritance by God because I became his child. I am his son. This is a faithful saying, all right? You want something that's good? And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. All right? So another subject of preaching, Titus, remind the people who they were and remind them who they are today and how they are today by Jesus Christ. You were wicked and vile in your sins in trespass. Then long came Jesus Christ who saved your soul by the mercy and grace and God. This is an outline. To the people. That without Jesus Christ. You're lost and without hope. With Jesus Christ. You're a new creature. That's a good message. Write that down Timothy. And that's to be treat, preached in the churches. There's so much to be treat, preached in the churches. Than the nonsense that's being preached. <coughs> that they. Which have believed in God. See, affirm constantly what we just read. How we're saved. What we're saved. What did it? Affirm that. And that which have believed in God, me, I'm saved, I believed in God, might be careful to maintain good works. So you see, there are works after salvation. But there are no works to be saved. So that time I got up from the from the coffee table, and people look at me, I don't see no change. He still looks like my grandson. He still looks like my brother. He still looks like the guy that came to church last week. And, oh, wow, look, he's passing out gospel tracts. He's telling people about Jesus. He's, he's asking questions about things he's read in the Bible this week. He's got a Bible. He's reading it. Wow, this whole different character, and the family starts looking at the person and saying, man, that guy's changed. Can't believe it. What is it? 
Did you turn over a new leaf? No, I became a Christian. I became saved. God renewed me. God regenerated me. See, those works I'm doing now, they're not saving me. I'm saved by Christ. I'm just happy to serve the Lord for what he's done for me. And that's why when you look at somebody, man, they, they're not pleasing God. They're not serving God. They're not taking care of God. They're not reaching out to God who, who has given them wonderful, great blessings and turned them from the sinful life that they come from. That you can say honestly by the Bible and judge that I don't think you're saved. Your life doesn't live to it. Maintain good works. Keep going until you die. These things are good and profitable unto men. This message I just gave you in chapter 3 is good and profitable. And that they continue to work for the Lord after they're saved is good and profitable. But avoid foolish questions. 1 Timothy 1.4 There will be people who are going to waste your time with questions. They don't want to know. They just want to cause a strife. And genealogies. That was in Timothy. Well, what Jewish land are you? Do you come from Abraham? Do you come from... Who, who cares? I come from God, Jesus Christ. I am the member of the family of God, his son, by Jesus. That's my genealogy. And contentions, fightings. Well, the early book of Acts, they were fighting. <laughs> Peter, how dare you go to that Italian's house? Ooh. I'm not taking a, a mark. He left us. Contentions. And strivings about the law. What's the law say? What's the law do? What's the law about the law? For they are unprofitable and vain. Foolish questions, genealogies, contentions, striving of the law are unprofitable and they're empty. What is good and profitable? Maintain good works before God. Paul laid it out right there. Well, we're not allowed to have this food because the Old Testament said we're not to eat this food. That is, the Bible says, unprofitable and it's vain. So how are you going to be judged, either judgment, the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment? Well, I kept the law. Who cares? And you're going to realize when you have any kind of public ministry that God's called you to, <clears throat> you are preaching to people who are relying on what they're doing. And they'll tell you, oh, I haven't killed anybody. I kept the law. I... And God's going to say, who cares? And yet, when you do what God has told you to do, God is going to exalt you by rewards and crowns. God never told a Christian to keep the Sabbath. Paul doesn't even mention the Sabbath. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition. All right, sir, you're doing wrong. There's chapter and verse. Okay, goodbye. Sir, I told you. Right here the Bible says what you're doing is wrong. That's warning number two. Knowing that he that is such a subverted, subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. God doesn't say three strikes are out. He says, when my person comes to you with a Bible and proclaims to you twice your sins, and you remain a sinner, and you still keep doing what you're doing, you're done. You're a heretic. I don't know where three strikes came, but it's not there. When I shall send Artemis unto thee, okay, Titus, I'm going to send Artemis to you, Titus was left off in what's the church? Crete, one five. So I'm going to send Artemis to you, or Tychicus, Ephesians six twenty one and Second Timothy four twelve. This guy shows up. Be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis. So I'm going to send one of, or both these men, and when I send them and come to you. 
You come to me. Don't leave that position open. Don't leave that pulpit empty. Because if you do, Satan will fill it. 2 Corinthians 11 it is, I believe. I know it's 1 to Corinthians 11 about Satan having ministers. Don't leave that pulpit empty until a faithful person takes over. Then I want to see you. For I have determined there to winter. Again, like he told Timothy, before winter come, because winter is not much traveling. It's dangerous. It's stormy. Bring Zenus, the lawyer. That's the only good lawyer in the Bible. Zenus, the lawyer. And Apollos, on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting of them. Take care of them. Help them. Meet their needs. They're faithful. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses. You got you to gotta work. Even if you're in the ministry, you got to work to meet your needs. Do it. That they be not unfruitful. Colossians 1.10 so, even though Paul says that the preacher, the minister, is to be double honored. If it comes down to because of a recession or whatever, loss of jobs. The preacher is not exempt from if he's got to get a job. All that are with me salute thee. Greet them that love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. And we close another book. Interesting book.